Hi there, I'm Robbie, W1RCP. If these videos are helpful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel to show your support. We're moving on to the Element 4, Sub-Element 1 Bravo. Which of the following constitutes a spurious emission? That is an emission outside the signal's necessary bandwidth that can be reduced or eliminated without affecting the information transmitted. And I have an example here. This is a transmission that is made on just below 3.500. And you can see that the signal to noise ratio here of spurious, spurious is about negative 40 decibels dBm. And you can see up here, the second harmonic is above that level. So whatever transmitter this is, it needs some filtering to keep the spurious emissions below that negative 40 dBm. That is a spurious emission. Question two, which of the following is an acceptable bandwidth for digital voice or slow scan TV transmissions made on HF amateur bands? That is three kilohertz. Single sideband is three kilohertz. You should remember that from your technician and general level exams. Three kilohertz. Within what distance must an amateur station protect an FCC monitoring facility from harmful interference? Now they do exist. They're out there. And that is one mile. So you must be one mile or more from that uh, monitoring facility. What must the control operator of a repeater operating in the 70 centimeter band do if a radio location system experiences interference from that repeater? The answer is cease operation or make changes to the repeater that mitigate the interference. Question five, what is the National Radio Quiet Zone? That is an area surrounding the National Radio Astronomy Observatory. Now, this is a National Radio Quiet Zone. This should be about a square mile or so, and these must be observatories right here that you need to limit that uh, transmission in that zone. They, they are supposed to be quiet because they're listening for RF coming from space. So you don't want to interfere with that. Question number six, which of the following additional rule rules apply if you are erecting an amateur station antenna structure at a site at or near a public use airport? You may have to notify the FAA and register it with the FCC as required by Part 17 of the FCC rules. Now, normally we're Part 97, but Part 17 is what has to do with antenna structures near airports. If you don't live near an airport, you're good. <laughs> but if you're going to put a 200-foot tower up near an airport, Airplanes probably are going to want to know about that. To what type of regulations does PRB-1 apply? And that is state and local zoning. Now, this is a memorandum of opinion, PRB-1. It is a great read if you want to read through it. HOAs, it can help, it can't help but this is for uh, state and local zoning. So HOAs are private agreements. So when you purchase that house, you go into an agreement with it. Uh, you might want to stick to parks on the air and soda or operating outside of your neighborhood or putting up stealth antennas. But if you read through this, there are some protections. And one of them is that there should be uh, we'll get to that that question in a minute, but um, there should be some accommodation for your service. What limitations may the FCC place on an amateur station if its signal causes interference to domestic 
broadcast reception, assuming that the receivers involved are of good engineering design. The amateur station must avoid transmitting during certain hours on frequencies that cause the interference. And these are just commission rules. Most of them are memorization. Which amateur stations may be operated under races rules? Any FCC licensed amateur stations certified by the responsible civil defense organization for the area served? That is the correct answer. What frequencies are authorized to an amateur station operating under races rules? Well, if you're the control operator, then it is all amateur service frequencies authorized to the control operator. So that goes back to your amateur radio chart. You need to know it. You need to know where you can operate and what modes can be operated in what sections of the band. What does PRB-1 require of state and local regulations affecting amateur radio antenna size and structures? And the answer is reasonable accommodations of amateur radio must be made. This is section 2 of 50. Let's have fun with this studying for the extra exam. I'm Robbie W1RCP 73.